Let's learn how to make a holographic foil effect in Unity. This might be the coolest thing I've ever done in game development, so I wanted to share with you all how to do it. Also, hi, I'm Holly, I'm a game developer, and if you're into that sort of thing, I hope you consider subscribing. Let's get into it. While I'm creating an object that resembles a trading card, I'll just tell you that to make this effect, we're going to be using Unity Shader Graph, so your version of Unity will need to support Shader Graph. If you set up your project using HDRP or URP, you'll already have it, but if you're using the built-in pipeline, it's a little hit or miss, so just a call out there if you're not seeing the options that I'm seeing. All right, now I just wanna get my scene set up so that I can see the changes that I'm about to make in real time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click, go to create, new shader graph, URP, and then lit shader graph. All lit means is that we want it to be affected by light. Now in order to see a shader, it has to be attached to a material. So we're going to right click again, go to create, and then new material. And I'm just going to name this trading card. Now all materials in Unity are going to have a default shader, but we want to change that. So with trading card selected, we're gonna go up to the top to shader, find shader graphs, and then we're going to find what we named our shader, in my case, holographic foil. And then finally, I'm going to drag and drop the material onto my card. And now if I double click on my shader, it will pop open as a tab on the top. And if I double click again, it will full screen into the shader window. For what I'm about to do to make sense, I have to tell you that there are three main parts that make something look holographic. The rainbow background, the actual image, and then finally the pattern of the holographic effect. Let's start with the rainbow effect first. Because we want the color to change depending on how we're looking at it, we're going to start with a view direction node and then we're going to change it to the tangent space. Without over explaining how tangent space works, basically I don't care about where in the world the card is, so we're not using world space. And I also don't care about the relation to the actual like vertex points or geometry of the object, so we're not actually using object space either. But what I do care about is the angle and rotation of the object, so that's why we're using tangent space. But I want the effect to change depending on whether I'm rotating the card on the x-axis or the y-axis, so I'm going to add in a split node. And in this case, even though it says RGBA, this is actually X, Y, Z, and W. So I'm going to connect some logic to the X and the Y slots. Next, I'm going to add in a multiply node, and I'm going to multiply each of these by a float value. So I'm going to add in a new float value. And this value is going to control just how rainbow we want the object to be. So I'm gonna right click on this and then I'm going to turn it into a property. So I'm gonna say convert to property and I'm just going to name this color density. And then I'm gonna set up the Y axis, which is very similar. So I'm just going to add in a multiply node. I'm gonna connect my Y value to one of the slots. And then I'm just gonna multiply that other multiply node by this. And now we can take this logic and actually plug it into a hue node so we can control the color. So I'm gonna take this and then I'm going to take that final output from the multiply and then I'm gonna put it into the offset node right here. And then I'm just gonna change this from degrees to normalized. And then we just need a base color to work off of. So I'm gonna add a new node and it's just going to be a color node. And we'll just plug that into the in slot. And then now here, basically you just need to choose any color that is not black or white. So I'm gonna start with cyan. And we should be seeing something a little bit different here. Um, then I realized that I forgot to set a default value on my color density. So if we just click over there and go to the graph settings, I can just turn that density up and see the effect take place. And you can see we kind of have this cross pattern and that is going to translate into the object's color shifting from the X axis or the Y axis. And nodes in the shader graph can get out of hand pretty quickly, so I'm just going to group all this and name it so I can keep it a little bit more organized. And then something I like to do before I'm done is just take that final node and plug it into the base color just to see how the effect is working in real time. 
So if I save my shader graph and then I go back over to my scene view with my card, you can see how the logic works. And if I go over here to my shader settings, you can see more clearly how the color density actually works. So if I want the color to be more dense, more rainbow, I can just turn up that value. But I don't really like that, so I'm going to turn it back down. But we can make this even cooler, so I'm going to unplug that real quick. And then we're going to focus on making the actual pattern on the card. We want to be able to control the size of the pattern, so I'm going to start with a tiling and offset node. And then the tiling slot takes two values, so I'm going to add in a vector 2 and plug that into the tiling slot. I also want to be able to control this from the inspector, so I'm going to convert this to a property and I'm just going to name it Pattern Tiling. And now we actually want to be able to add an image of a pattern, so I'm going to add in a Sample Texture 2D node. I'm going to plug the out from the tiling and offset into the UV slot over here. I'm just going to leave the texture blank for now, but I am going to plug in a Texture 2D Asset node. I also want to be able to control this from the inspector, so I'm going to convert this to a property and then I'm just going to name it Foil Pattern. And now I want to be able to control just how strong the pattern is, which will make a little bit more sense in a bit. So I'm going to plug this into a power node. And then I'm going to add in a float value to control the strength of the effect. I'm also going to convert this to be a property and I'm just going to name this Bright Power. And that's mostly it for the pattern section, so I'm just going to highlight all of this and then I'm going to turn it into a group. And now I'm going to add in a multiply node so I can multiply these two groups together and then I'm just going to plug it into the base color. Now if we go back over to our scene view, we can see that we have a few extra properties now added. We have some values for pattern tiling and we also have a slot for an image and bright power. I've also noticed at this moment that I did not set any default values for my pattern tiling, so I'm going to go back and set these um, to be 1 and 1. If you keep them at 0, 0 just means nothing, so even if you add in an image to that slot, because it is 0 and 0, you won't get any tiling whatsoever, you won't see anything. So I'm going to update that real quick, update it on the front end as well, and now let's get in an actual pattern. I have created this super simple star pattern on Canva um, and I actually have three of them which we'll get to in a second but I'm just going to export the first one for now so we can see how this works. Once I've dragged it into my Unity project now I can go back to my shader and drag and drop that image onto the image slot. It looks a little funky right now because we're just multiplying the color effect by the image but notice how that anything that was white in the image is now transparent. So this is how the pattern strength kind of works. So we're going to use images that are on a grayscale and then we can manipulate just how bright they are. This is a black and white image, so we're not going to get a whole lot of variability here, but that's the idea. And now back in our shader graph, let's put together the final piece of the puzzle, and that is the actual image that we want to have on the card. So let's unplug that multiply node real quick. And we're going to add in a, another node that is a sample texture 2D node. And again, we're going to take another 2D texture asset node and plug it into the texture slot. And then we're going to turn it into a property so that we can control it from the inspector. But this time it's not our pattern, it's the actual image, so I'm going to name this image. And then we're just going to add these two together. So we're going to take the RGB values from the image and then we're going to add them with the final output of the multiply node. And now we can plug this back into the base color and see how this works. We can save our shader graph and go back to our scene view. And I've just taken an image of a Pokemon card from the internet just to display how the effect works. And we're just going to drop that image into our slot now. 
and you can see that we have a holographic card. There it is. Now you can tinker with the values and get it how you like, and you could totally stop here and have a pretty convincing holographic effect depending on the pattern and the image that you want to use. However, if you want this to be insanely realistic, we can do one more thing and make this way cooler, in my opinion. If you look at something holographic in real life, the thing that makes it look really holographic is that you have multiple patterns overlaid on top of each other, and as one pattern is popping in, another pattern is popping out. So if we create multiple patterns with slightly different starting hues, we can get this to look awesome. Back in our shader graph, I'm just going to unplug that multiply node real quick, and then I'm gonna take this section over here and I'm going to group it just to keep it organized. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take our pattern and our color section and I'm going to copy and paste it twice. So we're gonna be working with three separate patterns and three separate hues. Just take a second to clean this up real quick. And then I just need to add all of these sections together. This is where the downsides of visual scripting really start to rear their ugly heads. Each add node only has two slots, and in math that doesn't really make sense and it just kind of overcomplicates this for no reason. However, that is what we're going to do just to make sure that these are connected. Then I'm just going to take this final math and attach it to our image add node and that's going to connect all of our logic together. But the other thing I need to do is change all of the hue values. So since I'm just using three patterns, I'm just going to um, kind of triangulate this. So I'm going to go and change this second hue to yellow. You can see it updates a little bit. And then I'm going to choose a pink. So we're using three separate starting points for the rainbow. And then for the actual patterns, I'm going to go one by one and I'm going to detach this from its main property and then I'm going to add it as a separate property so that I can control this. So I'm just going to convert this to an inline node and then reconvert it to a property. I'm going to name this foil pattern 2 and then I'm going to move it right below the other foil pattern so it's easier to read on the front end. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the third foil pattern. And now if we save and go back, you can see that two extra slots for patterns have been added. And now this is where the other patterns from Canva come into play. So I'm just going to export all of these and get them into my Unity project. And now I can drag and drop them into their respective slots. And now we have a truly holographic foil effect. As I move the card, you can see that some of the stars have one color, and then as I'm turning them, the other stars have a different color. So they pop in and they pop out. And then if you want to, you can make this look a little bit more realistic by adjusting the smoothness and the metallic values. And just by itself, that's really neat. But you may be wondering, like traditional Pokemon cards, um, the entire card isn't holographic. There's a mask effect that is going on. So how do you implement something that only part of the card is holographic? And for that, we can create a mask effect. But of course, to do that, we're going to need to know exactly where on the card we want the mask to happen. So I have taken this Pokemon card and put it into Canva, and then I'm just going to black out the area that I actually want to have the effect. So we're gonna be using black and white values here. And then back in our shader graph, we're going to add another sample texture 2D node to account for the mask. And then we're gonna plug in another texture 2D asset. And you probably guessed it, we're gonna turn this into a property as well. And I'm just going to name this mask. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna multiply it by our color values. 
And then we're going to take the output of the multiply node and add it to the add node inside of the image group. Grouping this real quick, just to make it easier on myself. And now if I save and go back to my scene view, you can see that I have a slot for the mask. And you can see that everything that is black will not be holographic and everything that is white will be holographic. So you can also reverse this effect as well. So if I want the opposite effect here, I can just swap these values and use that as a mask. And there you have it. It's like a real Pokemon card. And if you don't want a mask at all, uh, you can just leave it blank and that works perfectly fine too. And then if I want to create a new card, all I have to do is duplicate my material and swap out the image and swap out the patterns. So I have some heart patterns that I have created also from Canva and this is how those look. But the cool thing is that we're not just limited to black and white images. If we use an image like this that kind of has this glowy effect, uh, we're gonna get something really, really cool. And then as I was trying to add a third pattern to this, I realized that I made a tiny mistake on my shader graph that I actually forgot to add a final add node here. So I'm gonna go back and add that and make sure that that's right. But that is how you do it. If you ended up trying this effect, I'd love to see what you came up with. So leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you in the next video.